hello in this video i want to talk about how you can request the actual reasons for your visa refusal you heard me right the actual reasons for your visa refusal it could be your student visa refuser it could be your visitor visa refuser whatever visa it is so long as it has to do with canada i'm going to show you exactly how you can request the actual notes of the visa officer to see exactly how he or she made his or her decision about your application. If you've not um, subscribed to my channel, I encourage you to do so. Hit the subscribe button, uh, like this video, drop me a comment, drop me your questions. I'll do my very best to bring you all the information you need to improve your immigration experience with Canada. So there is a little bit of history to this. You may have noticed that anytime somebody gets refused or denied a Canadian visa application, they do attach a piece of paper. Uh, if you did an online application, it will be an electronic piece of paper. If you did a physical paper application, it will be just a one page paper, basically uh, giving you reasons why they refused you. The reasons are normally um, a list of reasons with boxes on the side. And then the visa officer will check a couple of the boxes and state that that is a reason why he or she is refusing you. Um, a refusal letter, whether in paper form or online, is not any letter anybody wants to see. Um, the feeling of just reading that alone can be heart wrenching and can just lower our emotions. Uh, take it easy if you've gone through a visa refusal, but I'm hoping that with this you can improve your next application don't give up uh, my own wife applied for a visa three times and was refused a visitor's visa a study uh, permit application a student visa and then finally she was re uh, approved for the visa so i hope that this experiences that we've put together in videos can also improve your own visa application experience don't give up okay you can keep applying eventually you're gonna get it but you just have to learn in any of the experiences you had so that you can improve on it now, the reasons that are attached to your documents when they refuse you um, are normally the generic reasons. What is a generic reason? In other words, they are basically a set of reasons where the visa officer just take, take, take them and then attach it to your application. And the generic reasons are basically reasons that don't give you, they, they don't tell you enough. They don't give you enough information. It only states that we are refusing you because you don't have enough money. Um, or we are refusing you because we don't think you are going to be uh, returning to your home country. And it doesn't give you a deeper reason as to how they make their decision. So there are times when people receive this and they go like, really? Did the visa officer really, really review my application? Some of you may even doubt if they really, really go, like reviewed your application. Some of you may think, well, I thought I had enough funds and I met all the requirements, but I still got denied. Did you guys really do your job? Or you were just sitting down and you were just checking the box, right? Those days are over. Yes, I'm saying those days are over. You know why? Because you can actually order a copy of the very note that the officer made huh, to refuse you. And how do you do that? Yes, there is something. Uh, this is based on a very landmark legal case in Canada where um, the, somebody challenged the visa officers in court and the IRCC in court by saying that, you know what, these reasons are not deep enough. You need to give our applicants more reason to know they have an entitlement. They, they are entitled to know exactly how you made a decision. So disclose that and let people know. In the past, it wasn't possible. When you get that paper, that was it. You don't get to know. And you get, keep applying and you keep applying. But now we've made some progress. Just based on this landmark legal case, which is Baker versus the Canadian immigration or Baker versus Canada, right? Baker versus Canada. You can Google that and read more about it. So basically, somebody tested the law, went to court, and they secured a judgment in favor of applicants. And that judgment says now their visa officers are required to release the very notes which is like where they go into detail to explain how they made their decision beyond the generic reason and the note right 
they have to basically disclose all of how they made their decision to you yes and guess how much it costs five dollars it costs just five canadian dollars to request that so if you been refused your visa and you're wondering how they made the decision you don't know and you're going to apply for the second one well this can help you because when you order they take you actually more seriously and they know that this guy is really really coming for us on the next application right now you have access to this information now through that legal case uh, we tested the Canadian and the right to information, okay, of uh, applicants in Canada and those who are also outside of Canada. So that benefits you. It is under what we call the ATIP, 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 uh, which is just an abbreviation for access to information and privacy. Access to information and privacy. So when you go to the website of the Canada Immigration, the Canadian Immigration, IRCC, they actually give you a step-by-step -step process where you have to basically click on an online link. You consent to you requesting the information about your application and the notes of the visa officer. And then, voila, you just go through the process simple online and then you get to do it. In this very video, I've decided to show the screen to you so you can see how it looks like. I'm going to attach the link in the description section so that you guys can also click on it and do more reading okay remember you can do this by yourself all you need to do is go online and then consent to it and fill out the process easy as that it will cost you just five dollars and you're gonna need a credit card to make the payment um, if your visa if you also want to use an immigration lawyer all right to do the application for you to request the notes of the visa officer you can also allow you can consent to allowing your representative which is your immigration lawyer to request that information on your behalf uh, remember if you're going to allow somebody else to do it on your behalf like an immigration lawyer or a consultant that you're using in canada remember you will need to consent to allowing them to retrieve information on your behalf since this is about you right you need to consent before they can disclose your information to a third party as well all right so this is under the uh access to information act in canada let me just show you the screen so so right here um i'm going to attach the link so don't worry about it how to make a request other the access to information act and that is what i was talking about here uh a tip ati or you can just say ati access to information act okay and the canadian uh immigration uh, commission ircc is required to receive that Send a request to the Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship Canada, which is IRCC, under the Access to Information Act to 1. Get information about IRCC. Get information that will have been created by IRCC. Get personal information submitted by a representative where the client with their consent is not a Canadian uh, citizen, permanent resident or here in Canada. The fee for request under the Access to Information Act is $5. To sign a request, you must be a Canadian citizen, a permanent resident of Canada, or an individual or corporation currently in Canada. So basically, you, the applicant, you can apply. If you have an immigration consultant in Canada or a lawyer that you're going to be using, they can also do it on your behalf, but you need to basically give them consent to do that on your behalf. And then basically, if you want to learn more, you can click on where it says learn more about this, or you can just basically go online and then you can apply by yourself. Do you see that? It says right here. It says right here. You just have to consent. And then after consenting to that, you can either apply online or you apply by mail by filling out all of this. But I, it's much easier if you do it online. And if you do it online, you can either use uh, a, a credit card to apply online. You will need a credit card or a debit card to apply online. And basically, if you apply, it's going to take you about four weeks for them to respond to you. OK, it will take about four weeks for them to respond to you Four weeks to get a feedback from them and i believe this will actually make it much more easier for a lot of people to do their next application yes you heard me right if you can do this especially if you know your documents are solid and tight and watertight and you don't believe how they made their decision remember request the visa officer's note 
and learn from how they made their decision. Feel free to challenge their decision using an immigration lawyer who is experienced and, and that's this kind of work. They might charge you a little bit of a fee, but they can always challenge the decision of the visa officer and state that the reason that they gave does not match with the documents that you presented. So test it. Remember, until you give up, you're surely going to be on your way to Canada at some point. Thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, share it, subscribe, hit the like button, drop me your questions and drop me your own comments as well and share with your friends as well to help them. This is Choco Melonera and remember, like I always say, you don't need more money to live a better life. Money is good, but it's not everything. What we need is more wisdom because wisdom is the principal thing in life. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Bye-bye.